Novo Nordisk may have just revealed the real future of obesity treatment, and it's not the drug everyone expected. If you're following the GLP-1 space, what's happening with amacretin could change everything from how you lose weight to what treatment options you have. Hello everyone, I'm Christopher Durham, and this is The Downsized. If you're new to our channel, welcome. My wife Lorraine and I have lost over 150 pounds together using GLP-1 medications like Zetbound, Monjaro, and Thirzepatide. And the downsized is the community and the resource we wish we had when we were first getting started. We're not doctors. This is not medical advice. Always talk to your doctor before starting or changing any treatment. If you're finding this helpful, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to our channel. It helps more people find this information and it lets us keep doing what we're doing. So let's begin. Let's start with what ha just happened. Nova Nordisk is moving both the injectable and the oral versions of amacretin into phase three trials. Trials are expected to begin in early 2026. That would be newsworthy on its own. But what makes this such a big story is the timing. Because Cagrisema, Novo's other major GLP-1 amylin drug, hasn't even launched yet. So the question becomes why green light a full phase three program for amacretin now? Because this isn't a backup plan. It's the next move. Novo's longtime CEO just stepped down after Eli Lilly overtook them in market share. Lilly now owns 53% of the GLP-1 market. They made 2.3 billion on Zepbound and 3.8 billion on Manjaro in just one quarter. Novo needed a bold play and this is it. In an earlier trial for Cagrisema, patients lost about 22% of their body weight over 68 weeks. That's a strong result. But the trial didn't require patients to escalate to the highest dose. Novo stock dipped, and the CEO's resignation followed. Now Novo is running a new phase 3 for Cagrisema, likely with a more aggressive dose escalation. But they're also fast-tracking amacretin in parallel. That tells you everything. They're betting amacretin is better, and they're betting they can build a portfolio of obesity treatments. Cagrisema combines semaglutide and cagrilinotide into a weekly shot. Amacretin, on the other hand, is a single molecule that hits both the GLP-1 and the amylin receptors. That could mean more stable dosing, fewer side effects, smoother titration, better patient adherence, and it comes in two forms, a weekly injection, we all know and love, and a daily oral tablet. So let's pause for a second and talk about the science, because this is where things really start to shift. GLP-1 receptor agonists like Wagovi and Zepbound slow digestion, regulate blood sugar, and signal satiety. They've been transformational, they certainly have for me. But for many people, especially those with type 2 diabetes or a long history of obesity, GLP-1s may not be enough. That's where amylin comes in. Amylin is another hormone secreted by the pancreas right alongside insulin. It works to suppress appetite, slow gastric emptying, and regulate how your body responds to food. But if your insulin signaling is off, chances are your amylin is too. Amacretin activates both GLP-1 and amylin receptors with a single molecule. That's different from Cagrisema, which combines two separate drugs. And that simplicity could matter, especially when it comes to titration, side effects, and how the drug performs in the real world. That's different from Cagrisema, which combines two separate drugs. And that simplicity could matter, especially when it comes to titration, side effects, and how the drug performs in the real world. Here's what we know from the phase 1b2a study. 1.25 milligrams for 20 weeks led to 9.7% weight loss. 5 milligrams for 28 weeks led to 16.2%. 20 milligrams for 36 weeks delivered a 22% weight reduction. This was a small trial, 125 participants, but the 22% weight loss rivals or beats what we've seen from existing GLP-1s. That's right, the same as, or better than, semaglutide and terzepatide, and it came without layering two drugs together. Martin Lang, Novo's EVP for development, said, we are very pleased that the feedback from the regulatory authorities has allowed us to take subcutaneous and oral amacretin in weight management to phase three. We are excited about the amacretin molecule, and this marks an important step forward. 
we look forward to sharing more information about the design of the Phase 3 program. So let's talk for a moment about the oral version. If Novo can deliver injectable level weight loss with a daily pill, this could change how obesity is treated. Right now, oral semaglutide requires fasting and a lot of patient effort. Lily's orforglopron is easier to take, but early data suggests that when it releases, it won't deliver the same dramatic weight loss. Amacretin could fill that gap. And Novo clearly believes in it because they're launching both injectable and oral phase three programs in parallel. So let's zoom out for a second and talk about the competition. Lily's riding high right now. They passed Novo in market share, their revenue is soaring, and Orforglopron is expected to launch in 2026 as the first oral GLP-1 that doesn't require fasting. But Novo is setting up a counterattack. Amacretin hits the same pathway, maybe more effectively, and adds amylin receptor activity. If their oral candidate proves strong, they could reclaim patients who aren't satisfied with current options. So what does all this mean for real people? Real people like you and I, real people who either are currently taking GLP-1s or who would like to take GLP-1s, who would like to treat the disease of obesity. Because at the end of the day, that's all that really matters, right? It's how can we take care of ourselves? How can it be affordable and how can it be ac accessible? If you're on a GLP-1 right now, and you're not seeing the results you'd hope for, or if you've had trouble with side effects or titration, this could be your next option. If you've wanted to try a medication but weren't ready for weekly shots, the pill version could finally make this accessible. And if the trial data holds, it might not just match what's out there, it could exceed it. Think about that for a minute. It could exceed terzepatide. Now we know retitrutide's coming and that's down the road late 2026 hopefully, but it could exceed the existing drugs today as an oral. Let's talk about the timeline a little bit. Phase three trials are expected to begin in early 2026. That means if all goes well, amacretin could be submitted to the FDA in 2029 or 2030 in the US and early 2031 in the EU. Yeah, it's still a few years away, no question about it. It should be right now, we're all impatient. But in obesity medication, that's right around the corner, and it means more options are coming for people who need them. Finally, let's talk about price and access. Right now, GLP-1 medications are expensive. Insurance coverage is a major barrier, but when two pharma giants are going head-to-head -head in Novo and Lilly, it increases pressure to compete. That competition could drive down list prices. It could expand insurance coverage, and it could mean more patients finally getting access to the treatment they desperately need. Novo isn't just trying to win back market share. They're trying to build what comes next. And amacretin might be the drug they've been waiting to show the world. We'll keep watching this closely. If you're on a GLP-1, trying to get one, or just want to understand what's coming next, this is the story to follow. If this video helped, like and subscribe to The Downside and tap the bell so you never miss an update. My name is Christopher Durham, and we are The Downside.